I will just quickly again go over through the uh, go over the um, um, interarrival times uh, that we discussed in the last lecture, and then I uh, obtained the distribution for uh, interarrival times. So we already said showed that f x one t is lambda e raise to minus lambda t. That means uh, the uh, x one denotes the arrival time up to the first uh, uh, up to the first event that occurs. So therefore, that is exponential. So that means the interval is. Uh, uh, lambda uh, the uh, interval for the first has exponential with uh, distribution with parameter lambda. Then if uh, you want to now compute for x 2, then let us look at the probability x 2 greater than t, when x 1 is equal to s. So, here you see again uh, the idea is that the first interval uh, the first uh, event occurred here and now, you, so this was your x 1. Now, this, this time is denoted by x 2 and we are saying that this is greater than t. So, if this time is greater than t, that means there is no arrival in this time. And so, when you are looking at probability x 2 greater than t conditioned on x 1 being s, but since we have shown already that the inter arrival times are exponential and so they are memory less and therefore, it does not matter uh, see this probability will remain the same whether uh, it is here or here or anywhere. So, it does not matter when the first uh, event took place uh, the, the probability uh, the conditional probability is the same as the probability x 2 greater than t. So, this is the memory, mem memory less property that we have already shown. Uh, so, therefore, this is equal to this and here the same thing probability s comma s plus t 0 given that x 1 is s. So, therefore, this is equal to probability that uh, there are no arrivals in the time interval s comma s plus t and that probability is e raise to minus lambda t. Is that okay? Because here again uh, the number that you are wanting to your, the probability that you want to compute here is that there is no arrival in this interval and so the conditional has no bearing on this probability also. So, therefore, this is e raise to minus lambda t and here this in terms of your uh, uh, distribution function, you will write this probability as 1 minus capital F x 2 d t and this is equal to e raise to minus lambda t. Therefore, if you differentiate both sides, you get F x 2 t is minus lambda e raise to minus lambda t. So, this uh, goes out and therefore, you have shown that uh, for x 2 also, the uh, uh, distribution is exponential lambda. And now, repeated use of this argument, because essentially we are using the memoryless property and so, the same argu argument can be repeated for x 3, x 4 and so on. So, we um, end up with this proposition that when you take the sequence of inter arrival times, uh, these are identically independently distributed. Remember, uh, the pro we have assumed for the Poisson process independent increments and uh, stationary increments. So, therefore, these are um, inter arrival times are identically independently distributed exponential lambda random variables. That is the problem the process is probabilistically the process probabilistically starts itself, which means it is memory less. Every time uh, event occurs it starts itself again. So, the, there is no memory or as to when the uh, last event occurred it just starts afresh from, uh, from after an event. So, when you start counting the inter arrival times uh, it rejuvenates itself again. Okay. Now, just a word about the parameter lambda. So, you see because this is exponential lambda, so expectation of x i will be 1 upon lambda and um, I mean uh, the uh, theory about exponential distribution does not say anything about lambda as long as lambda is greater than 0. So, lambda can be uh, any positive number. Okay. So, here uh, uh, before I come to that, see a high lambda corresponds to a small average of waiting time. Right? If lambda is large, then 1 upon lambda which is the expected value is small and so it is saying that this is the average of the inter arrival times. So, that means, if the average is small, then the arrivals will be occurring 
in small intervals, right? Because the expected value is small. So when lambda is high, it corresponds to a small average of waiting time between two consecutive occurrences. Yeah. So we were saying that when uh, lambda uh, has a large value, the uh, corresponding expected value will be a, a small number, and so that would mean that the interarrival times uh, are uh, smaller in the are small in the sense that the uh, average is small. So therefore, the arrivals are occurring. Uh, at smaller intervals, right? And um, uh, in any case, um, lambda is called the intensity of the process. So there is no therefore. It simply says that lambda measures the. So uh, if, if lambda is small, then it, this will be big. So that means uh, uh, the interarrival time average is large, and so the uh, events are occurring at uh, large intervals. And therefore, uh, we are saying that lambda is called the intensity of the process also. Okay and uh, uh, lambda can be any positive number, but if we think of earthquakes in Indonesia say for example, and take one year as unit of time. Right? Suppose, I consider the uh, process, you know, if I am counting the number of earthquakes that have occurred um, uh, in a span of 10 years say for example, and so if I take the unit of uh, time as one year, then lambda should not be large because if lambda is large, then what will it say? That 1 upon lambda is small, and therefore, it would mean that the earthquakes are occurring at smaller intervals of time. But we all know that uh, the earthquakes, of course, they are unpredictable, but normally it does not happen that uh, uh, earthquakes occur uh, very often. Right? So, uh, it, one has to be careful, that is why uh, uh, this, de, this, uh, uh, this uh, interpretation of lambda gives you an insight into as to how, when you go about modeling a, a process, then uh, how should your choice of lambda be made. Right? Or, and also like if you look at uh, moments, this I mean again this is the time, this when the, um, when a radioactive material sends particles, then the intensity is high. The intensity is high and therefore, this is small. So, the particles spread, radioactive particles spread very fast. And so, uh, if you are counting at any point of uh, this thing, uh, how often the particle is arriving, then the inter arrival times will be small and therefore, uh, this will be small. So, lambda would be high. So, uh, that is why. So, just to give you an idea and then you can look at many uh, different examples and uh, see how uh, the value of lambda will reflect the um, inter arrival averages. Right? Okay. Similarly, you want to look at the parameter lambda t. So, lambda t is the number of events. So, this is actually on the average the number of events in time t, in time period t. On the, so, this is your mean arrival rate. Uh, so, now number of events in two disjoint time intervals are independent. Okay. Just now we said now that they are uh, independent increments. So, therefore, uh, if you look at uh, the arrival in between 0 and 1, it is Poisson lambda, and this is uh, Poisson lambda between 1 and 2. Now, if you look at the time interval 0 2, then it will become Poisson 2 lambda, because again uh, from now, by now we have by so many different methods shown you that if uh, two random variables x 1, of course, here x 1 is uh, Poisson lambda x 2 is Poisson lambda, then x 1 plus x 2 would be again Poisson 2 lambda, the parameters get added. Right. So, therefore, uh, 0 2 would uh, the, uh, the number of arrivals will be Poisson uh, 2 lambda. So, therefore, in 0 t, it will be Poisson lambda t, this is the whole idea. Right. So, occurrences are, uh, okay. yeah. so this is the important thing and therefore, uh, in time 0 t, we will say that the arrival rate is lambda t. Poisson lambda t. This is the whole idea. Of course, uh, t can be fractional and so on. So, one can again interpret in the same way. Now, uh, another thing is that since we are talking of stationary increments, therefore, uh, what we have to say is that uh, the arrivals over the time 0 t are distributed in a uniform way, because they are random. Right, 0 to t. They, they are anyway random events and then when we are talking of uh, number of arrivals, for example, when I am counting n t, right, this is the number of arrivals uh, in time 0 to t, in the span time, in the span of time 0 to t. 
So, then uh, we um, have to think the way uh, the process is being modeled is that in this particular time period, the arrivals can occur anywhere. And so, uh, the best way to model that is that the, the uh, arrivals are uniform in the interval 0 to t. And through an example again, I will try to uh, uh, make you understand this concept a little better. Okay. So, after computing the distribution function of the fun uh, inter arrival time, let uh, the another quantity of interest is S n, which is sigma x i i varying from 1 to n, which means S n is the waiting time for the nth event to occur. So, uh, because uh, see x you are adding up x 1 to x 2 to x n. So, x n is the uh, time when the nth uh, the inter, inter, uh, inter arrival time between uh, n minus 1 nth and the nth event. So, therefore, uh, S n will be the waiting time for the nth event to occur. Is that okay? So, you have just added up all the uh, you see on the line you have you starting from 0 this is x 1 this is x 2 and so on and finally, this is x n. So, at this point the nth event has occurred. Right. Starting from here, this is the first event, second event and so on. So, at this point, uh, the nth event has occurred. So, this the total time, that means this the total time you are denoting by S n. So, which is the, you can say a waiting time for the nth event to occur, for the nth uh, you know the uh, time the volcano has to erupt, a particular volcano or earthquake to occur, whatever process you are looking at you can uh, interpret S accordingly. Now, from independence of x i's and being identically distributed as exponential lambda and here again you see uh, in the last few lectures, we have been talking about sum of independent uh, uh, random variables and through convolution, through m g f's and so on. We have looked at the distributions of sums of independent random variables. So, here it immediately follows that S n is gamma n lambda, because here the uh, uh, x i's are identically distributed as, as, as exponential lambda, n of them you are taking sum of n of so these random variables, exponential random variables. So, the uh, sum will be gamma n comma lambda and therefore, the uh, p d f or the density function for uh, f s n t is lambda e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to n minus 1 upon n minus 1 factorial for t non negative. right? So, this is the thing, but now again as I said uh, it always helps to be able to use other tools that we have developed. And so, let us try to do it and the of course, the m g f again which has already been computed for a gamma random variable is lambda upon lambda minus s raise to n. So, while writing m g f of s n uh, the s got written uh, by mistake. So, it is actually m g f of s n, which will be lambda upon lambda minus s raised to n. So, the idea was that you are computing it at s. So, therefore, it got written there. So, this is actually lambda upon lambda minus s raised to n. Let us look at it in an alternate way and that is also interesting. So, let us just be uh, very clear about this. N t greater than or equal to n, if and only if s n is less than or equal to t that is, if the number of arrivals by time t greater than or equal to n, then the time s n for the nth event to occur is less than or equal to t and vice versa. That is, if s n is less than or equal to t, then it will imply that n t must be greater than or equal to n. So, when you want to compute uh, the distribution function of s n, this is probability s n less than or equal to t, which because the two events are the same, this is probability n t greater than or equal to n. And so, since n t is Poisson distributed a Poisson random variable with the uh, lambda t as the parameter. So, therefore, this probability can be written as sigma i varying from when n to infinity e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to i upon i factorial. Right. Now, let us differentiate this uh, equation from both sides. And so, on the left hand side, this will be the p d f of s n. And now, here um, let us uh, do it term by term. So, uh, yes, so uh, the derivative of this first. So, minus lambda e raise to minus minus lambda t, lambda t raise to i upon i factorial. And then the derivative of this 
which we are writing as. So, uh, first function as it is e raise to minus lambda t into uh, lambda raise to i remains as it is t the power of t becomes i minus 1 and then i factorial here. Right, which you can you know cancel the i part here, then it will be i minus 1 factorial. So, uh, and e raise to minus lambda t, I have taken outside, then this summation from n to infinity. Okay. So, I am not writing out uh, many, many terms here, I just have to show you that you see, um, when you take n i equal to n, the term from here you will get lambda, lambda t raise to n upon n factorial and this will give you lambda raise to n, t raise to n minus 1, n minus 1 factorial. Right? So, these are the two terms. Now, put i equal to n plus 1. So, this will be minus lambda, lambda t raise to n plus 1, n plus 1 factorial right? plus lambda n plus 1, t raise to n upon n factorial. So, you see this cancels with this and then I thought I will um, also write the values corresponding to i equal to n plus 2. So, then that will be lambda, lambda t raise to n plus 2 upon n plus 2 factorial plus lambda n plus 2 t raise to n plus 1 and n plus 1 factorial. So, that cancels out this. So, you can see the pattern first and the fourth here, then the third and the uh, four, fifth, sixth and so on. So, uh, all these things will cancel out except for this, because this is the lowest degree term after that the powers of t keep on increasing. So, this is the only one which is left out, the, all these will cancel out. right? And so, uh, you are left with e raise to minus lambda t into lambda, lambda t raise to n minus 1 upon n minus 1 factorial, same as 1, but which is a gamma density function, gamma n comma lambda. right? So, be, I just wanted you to sort of you know make use of this also and therefore, you can even do it directly. So, once when you generate so many tools, uh, it is always possible to prove a result by more than one way and it also helps, it gives you a better insight if you can do that. Right. Okay. So, then expected value of S n will be n upon lambda and variance S n will be n upon lambda square. Fine. Now, uh, we will um, uh, further uh, uh, you, uh, prove some more properties of the Poisson process and then uh, you know work out examples to show you uh, how you make use of these uh, all this machinery that uh, we have developed. Okay. Now, uh, for example, uh, if you take a Poisson process n t, t greater than or equal to 0, then uh, there and there can be two sub processes. Uh, if you remember while discussing the joint m g f, I talked about uh, Poisson process and then I said that if all the um, uh, events that are occurring are being counted, uh, then uh, the, the probability of an event being counted was p and event not being counted was 1 minus p. And then I showed you through, uh, through uh, the m g f that um, each of them, each of these process again would be a Poisson. So, uh, see while talking about the Poisson process. Uh, having uh, two sub processes, which we call type 1 and type 2. And so, the probability that uh, uh, the uh, type 1 would ha have occurrence uh, with occur with probability p and type 2 with occur with probability 1 minus p. So, I have already, so the only correction I want to make is that see here, um, your n t is lambda p t, okay, because we are talking about uh, uh, with respect to t. So, uh, then we are talking of arrival time, arrival rate uh, in the interval 0 to t. So, now here similarly, your n 1 t will be then Poisson and this we th showed through uh, uh, m g f pr process, you know we showed that it can be, uh, both will be again Poisson. So, these sub processes uh, n 1 t would be Poisson lambda p t and um, n 2 the uh, process uh, type 2 which will be, um, so the random variable is n to t will be Poisson lambda 1 minus p t. So, the we have to at attach. So, I what I wrote in the lecture was without uh, the t part everywhere here. So, this is what the correction is being made. Otherwise, I have explained uh, what we mean by these sub processes and so on in the lecture itself. So, exactly the same thing, but here again I um, will do this, I uh, will uh, uh, try to uh, prove the same result. Uh, by using the machinery that uh, the definitions that we have made here, I will try to do that, okay. because the m g f thing we know. So, here it is same thing is saying that there are two types of, that means, uh, you, you may be considering 
uh, let us say immigrants from another country and the immigrants may be Hindus, Muslims, whatever it is. So, therefore, the, the total process of immigrants coming from another country may, may be a Poisson process. And then, in that uh, number, the kinds of people that are arriving, you may want to separate them into two streams. One may be, let us say Hindus, the other may be Muslims. So, there will be type 1 arrival and the probability of uh, uh, one of the immigrants being a Hindu is probability p and the um, 1 minus p is the probability of the immigrant being Muslim. So, then uh, p. So, we will now prove it uh, in a different way, okay, in an alternate way. So, as I said, uh, the proposition is that uh, 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 there is a Poisson process and n t is the number of uh, arrivals in time up to time t. Then, if there is type 1 and type 2 processes, sub processes and so, uh, type 1 process that means, the type 1 event occurs with probability p and time uh, and the uh, type 2 event occurs with probability 1 minus p. We want to show that uh, n 1 t is Poisson with uh, lambda p as the parameter and n 2 n 2 t is Poisson with parameter 1 minus p lambda. We want to show this okay. and um, as I told you that we, we have already uh, shown this result uh, using m g f s joint m g f, but let me do it through. Uh, so, we will show that n, n 1 t, t greater than 0, this uh, satisfies your definition 2, which remember we said is uh, more easily verifiable. And so, uh, uh, let us do it quickly. Since, n 0 is 0, this implies n 1 is 0, because your uh, n t is n 1 t plus n 2 t. If this is 0, then both of them must be 0. So, n 1 is 0. Now, uh, the other part is that, uh, you know, st uh, independent and stationary increments. So, which uh, can, can also be easily seen, because if I condition this by fixing n t equal to n, then the arrivals here are also, uh, you know, they only depend on the length of the interval and, uh, and are independent of what has occurred before. So, that is they are memoryless. So, by conditioning also you do not change uh, the uh, independence, uh, independent increment property and the stationary uh, proper, uh, stationary increment property. So, therefore, uh, n 1 t satisfies both. Now, we just want to show that your probability n 1 h equal to 1. So, the property 3 should be satisfied. Now, let us just look at this event. So, if um, type 1 arrival uh, in time h is 1, then we can write this break up this event as saying that n 1 h is 1 given that n h is 1. So, total arrival is 1 and then n 1 uh, is 1. And so, this will be condition this into probability that uh, n h n h is 1 right or probability n 1 is h and n, n h is greater than or equal to 2. So, these are the two possibilities right because either n h 1 has uh, uh, is 1 or n h 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So, this will be this into probability n h greater than or equal to 2. So, I like the proof, because just by basic definition of the process, we are able to show this result. So, here uh, see n 1 h is p right and then uh, probability n h equal to 1 is because n is anyway a Poisson process. So, we it already satisfies the definition. So, therefore, probability of n h equal to 1 is n h plus order h. This when given that there is one arrival. So, then n 1 h the probability is p right plus now again here arrival uh, n 1 h is 1. So, that probability is p and then n h greater than or equal to 2 n satisfies the condition 4 also. So, therefore, order h right and so this will be uh, lambda p h plus order h, because p, see remember when you say a function is of order uh, like this, then constants are all allowed, because it is only the power of h which is important. Uh, it is higher power and so as h becomes smaller and smaller, this goes to 0. So, therefore, that p gets absorbed here and therefore, this is it. So, uh, this is what, yeah. So, therefore, this satisfies definition, because lambda p is the probability now of uh, arrival. Uh, so, therefore, this will be lambda p into h right. And this n 1 h is greater than or equal to 2 is satisfied, because this probability is less than or equal to probability of n h greater than or equal to 2 right by the definition, because n h is uh, n 1 h plus n 2 h. And since this is order h, so this has to be also order h. 
So, a nice simple proof and I like it. Of course, you uh, we have already done it through the MGF method, but that was for a general situation. Now, here uh, we, we are doing it for a Poisson process. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the type 1 and type 2, that means if you have sub processes and certainly this can be extended to more than two sub processes. So, if you have more than two sub processes, each of them and so of course, the, some of the probabilities must add up to 1, which it will and therefore, uh, you can say that all the sub processes will be independent. Okay, now, uh, why, how do I show that uh, uh, n 1 and n 2 are independent, that part is also there. Uh, that n 1 and n 2 are independent. Once we have shown and similarly by the sim, uh, by the similar argument, you will show that n 2 h is also Poisson with parameter lambda into 1 minus p. And now, you can use the uh, joint m g f method to show that they will be independent. So, uh, this method I use to show that uh, n 1 t will be Poisson with lambda p as the parameter and n 2 will be Poisson with lambda uh, parameter lambda into 1 minus p. To show independence, you can use the m g f method. Okay. So, let us look at this example. Suppose that people from Bangladesh migrate into northeastern states of India at a Poisson rate of lambda equal to 5 per day. Okay. So, the question asked is, what is the probability that the expected time until the 15th immigrant arrives. So, what is the probability that the expected time until the of the expected time uh, that the uh, 15th immigrant arrives. So, that means you are asking for uh, S 15. So, S 15 is uh, gamma 15 comma 5 by the result that we arrived uh, some time ago, right? because it will be x 1 plus x 2 plus x 15 and so that will be gamma 15 comma 5 and uh, the expected value is 15 upon 5. Remember, because this is gamma, this is n upon lambda. So, this will be uh, 15 upon 5, which is 3 days. So, the expected arrival time, uh, the expected time until the 15th immigrant arrives. Fine. Okay. Now, what is the probability that the elapsed time between the 15th and 16th arrival exceed 2 days? So, here you are asking for x 16, because x 16 is the inter arrival time between the 15th and the 16th arrival. So, you are asking for the probability that x 16 is greater than 2 and that will be uh, e raise to minus uh, 2 lambda. Uh, yes, uh, again this is from your, uh, this is from your uh, uh, exponential distribution, right, because when you have lambda e raise to minus lambda t and if you are asking for uh, the uh, this thing uh, from uh, let us say a to infinity, then this is what uh, lambda upon minus lambda e raise to minus lambda t a to infinity and so this is uh, e raise to minus a lambda. So, this is it. So, probability x 16 greater than 2 will be e raise to minus 2 lambda, which because lambda is 5. So, this is e raise to minus 10 and I have just computed the value here, because you can write this as e raise to minus 2 raise to 5 and e raise to minus 2. Okay, I knew the value is 0 0.133, so we just raise it to 5. Anyway, um, now if, uh, if a Bangladeshi immigrant is a Hindu with probability 1 by 10, then what is the probability that no person of Hindu origin will migrate to northeastern region in the month of March? just to show you the uh, use of you know the what we just discussed. So, here uh, that means, it is lambda p t. So, uh, lambda is 5, uh, p is 1 by 10 and the time is 31 days, March has 31 days. So, therefore, uh, the no Hindu uh, will arrive in that period again will be e raise to minus lambda t p, which is e raise to minus 31 by 2 and so you can compute this number. So, this is the whole idea and then of course, we will look at some more properties of uh, the uh, Poisson process and work out a few more examples. Yeah, now, let us look at this example, where uh, we are trying to compute the conditional uh, distribution of n s, uh, given that n t is n. So, uh, given that uh, n arrivals are there in time, uh, in time 0 t. Uh, and uh, s is less than t. So, now you want to look at the conditional distribution of n s, given that. yeah. See, uh, uh, through all these examples, I am just trying to familiarize you more with the working of the uh, process and the machinery that we are developing. This is the whole idea and in the process, it makes the uh, uh, 
subject uh, quite interesting. Okay. So, uh, the solution is that um, and then the of course, it is being asked do you recognize this distribution. Once you get, once you obtain the conditional distribution, uh, the question asked is do you recognize this distribution. Okay. So, um, you are given that n t is n, you have to find the probability that n s is equal to k, given that n t is n. right? So, now that means, if um, up to time uh, 0 s, the arrivals are k and up to time uh, t, the arrivals are n. So, obviously, the number of arrivals in time uh, t minus s is n minus k. Right? That is how it will make up uh, the number of arrivals up to time t as n. So, up to time s, the number of arrivals are k and then in the interval um, uh, um, s to t, which is uh, the interval length and by now we know that we just have to worry about the length of the interval and not exactly where that interval is occurring. So, uh, the number of arrivals in time uh, t minus s is n minus k. So, when you write down this probability, uh, probability n s equal to k given that n t is n, this you can write as probability n s is k and probability uh, comma n t the joint probability of n of t minus s is n minus k conditioned on the n t equal to n. And since again from the uh, independent uh, increment property uh, for the disjoint intervals or for uh, s n t minus s, the uh, probability can be written as a product of these two probabilities. So, therefore, uh, this will be the product of these two probabilities, the denominator numerator and the denominator will be probability n t equal to n. Okay. So, uh, I suppose, I hope this is clear. So, therefore, um, e raise to minus, uh, this probability is e raise to minus lambda s, uh, lambda s raise to k upon k factorial and uh, this probability will be e raise to minus lambda t minus s, lambda t minus s raise to n minus k upon n minus k factorial divided by e raise to minus lambda t, lambda t raise to n upon n factorial. Okay. So, um, as long as this part is clear that uh, when see this probability of course, I can write in this way and then this I can write as a product of these two probabilities. Okay. Um, and so, now you see that um, this is e raise to minus lambda s and here you get e raise to uh, plus lambda s, which cancels out. Then e raise to minus lambda t and in the denominator you have e raise to minus lambda t. So, the e terms all cancel out right? and you are left with. Uh, so, this n factorial will come in the numerator. So, the first term that I have written is n factorial upon k factorial n minus k factorial, this I have put together and then you have lambda s raise to k and lambda t minus s raise to n minus k divided by lambda t raise to n. So, this is what I have written here. Okay. So, this whole expression simplifies to this. Yes. And now, here what you can do is, see again the lambda raise to k and lambda raise to n minus k is lambda raise to n, which cancels with the lambda raise to n here. So, you are left with s by t raise to k. Now, the t raise to n, I can write this as k plus n minus k. So, the k uh, t raise to k uh, couples with this, which is s upon t raise to k and this here it will be 1 minus s upon t raise to n minus k. So, uh, we see that now you can recognize this. Uh, if you treat p equal to s by t, then this is a binomial probability uh, when you are choosing k items out of n. That means, you are asking for k successes out of n trials and uh, n independent trials and your probability of success is s by t. The more important thing is that this whole expression that the conditional distribution is independent of lambda. That means, no matter what the uh, 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 parameter of the Poisson pr process is, uh, these conditional, this conditional probability uh, is independent of lambda. It is only dependent on the length of the uh, time intervals. That means, here it was n s and there it was n t. Uh, so, that s and t. So, um, I am sure there are uh, many more interesting impl implications of uh, this result. Okay. But again, uh, you know, you can get it nicely by just using the uh, uh, definitions and so on. Now, let me again uh, take up this interesting optimization problem. 
And uh, here, uh, uh, again the machinery is not uh, very complicated. Suppose that items arrive at a processing plant, in accordance with the Poisson process with rate lambda. So, that means, the items are arriving at the, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the gate of the uh, processing plant, and the arrival uh, process is uh, Poisson with rate lambda. Now, at a fixed time, all items are dispatched from the system. So, the uh, items get processed, and after a time t, when they all collect, they are dispatched to from wherever they came. Now, the problem is to choose an intermediate time t, belonging to 0, comma t, at which all items in the system. That means, all the items, which have been processed by time small t, they get dispatched, and then the remaining, uh, which get processed from time t to capital T, they will be, uh, after being processed, they will be dispatched. So, uh, that means, they have, uh, you know, they are not going to wait till the end of up to time t. So, in between also, they would like to dispatch the items. And the idea here is that, uh, this will, uh, this way they want to minimize the total expected wait time of all items. So, total expected waiting time, right. This is what uh, we have to uh, uh, know, write down the expression, and then see how we minimize. So, the choice of small t, that means the intermediate time, at which you want to dispatch whatever items have been processed, this is, uh, that has to be uh, uh, fixed, that has to be uh, sort of uh, obtained by this process. Uh, so, expected number of arrivals in 0 t is lambda t. Remember, because this is Poisson with parameter lambda. So, therefore, uh, in time 0 t, the uh, uh, expected value is lambda t, right. And each arrival is uniformly distributed. Remember, I some time ago discussed, when we were looking at the uh, Poisson process and its uh, uh, properties, and we said that, because uh, because of the uh, uh, stationary increments, uh, when uh, the number of items that arrive in this time, they would be uniformly distributed over the, uh, randomly distributed over the time interval 0 t, right. So, therefore, um, uh, in time 0 t, the expected any, any uniform uh, variable uh, distributed over 0 t has mean t by 2. So, the expected wait time is t by 2 all items, which start getting processed from here till up to this. So, their expected wait time is t by 2, because we have said that the, uh, you know, the processing is uniformly done. Uh, I mean, in the sense that, sorry, the processing is not uniformly done, it is that is the arrival is. So, it is distributed, the arrivals of these items is distributed uniformly in the interval 0 t. So, their expected wait time is t by 2, because they will be dispatched by the end of this time period, right. Okay. Now, so total expected weight of all items arriving in 0 t is therefore, lambda t into t by 2. So, expected weight time of any item is t by 2, right, because uh, they are in uniformly distributed in this interval, uh, the items and therefore, for each of them the weight time is t by 2. And since the expected number of uh, uh, items that arrive in this time is lambda t. So, the whole thing is uh, lambda t into t by 2, which is this. Right. Now, the similar reasoning holds for items arriving in time t to t comma t. And therefore, for these items, because they will get dispatched at time capital T. So, the total expected wait time will be therefore, lambda t square by 2 plus half lambda capital T minus t whole square. So, I hope this part is clear, right. And this reasoning is ok, because expected wait time into the expected number of items that arrive. So, that gives me the total expected wait time of all items arriving in time in the interval 0 t. Okay. So, to minimize that, uh, to find out the minimizing value of t, I differentiate this expression with respect to t, and I get lambda t minus, because there is a minus here. So, the 2 is gone. So, lambda t minus lambda capital T minus t is 0, and this gives me t equal to t by 2, as you would expect, because the um, arrivals are uh, uniformly distributed over the time, uh, time interval. And uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, this is the minimizing value, uh, you find out w prime t, and w prime t will come out to be 2 lambda, which is positive. So, therefore, uh, this gives you the minimizing value. So, therefore, um, it says that you uh, dispatch whatever items get processed 
uh, in the middle of the time and then uh, wait for the uh, others to be processed and uh, uh, dispatch them at t. Uh, a simple which appeals to your uh, reasoning also, but then through this machinery also we have arrived at this result. Right. So, before I begin uh, the uh, you know uh, talking about queuing models, I thought I will finish off the uh, uh, lecture on uh, poison processes with this example on, on exponential distributions, because it is somehow related and uh, uh, part of it. right? And so, and this would be the right place to talk about it, because we have talked of exponential uh, of the Poisson process, and uh, we have talked of uh, people, uh, expected number of people in the system and so on. And then, uh, because uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the um, inter arrival times had, we have shown that uh, each of them were identically independently distributed as exponential random variables. So, I thought this would be also, uh, this can be part of it. So, here the, uh, the whole idea is that, and of course, this is a, a simple example on the uh, mem memory less property of uh, <coughs> the exponential distribution. So, uh, consider a railway booking counter that is run by two clerks. <coughs> Suppose that when Mr. Sharma enters the system, he discovers that Mr. Jan is being served by the clerk at one counter and Mr. Verma is being served at the other counter. Okay, so, both the counters are busy, when Mr. Sharma enters the system. Now, uh, Mr. Sharma's service will begin as soon as either Mr. Jan or Mr. Verma leave the system, that whenever, whenever as, uh, as soon as one of them is uh, completes the service, uh, they will, uh, he, he, will, he will leave the system and then Mr. Sharma's turn will come to be serviced by the clerk. So, if the amount of time a clerk spends with a customer is exponentially distributed with mean 1 by mu, that means the uh, parameter of the exponential distribution is mu and therefore, the mean, mean time the, that uh, a clerk spends with a customer is 1 upon mu. Right. What is the probability that of the three customers, Mr. Sharma is the last to leave? So, of course, here um, Mr. Sharma will only get serviced once one of the customers has left. So, the actual question is that uh, when Mr. Sharma's turn comes for being serviced, there is one person, one of Mr. Jan or Mr. Verma, one of them is being serviced, right. And so, uh, Mr. Sharma goes to the clerk for uh, getting his job done, and then uh, the idea is that who will leave the system first. So, suppose Mr. Jan is being serviced, well, Mr. Sharma goes to the um, clerk, because Mr. Verma has left. So, um, the question being asked is, what is the probability that Mr. Sharma would still be in the system, when Mr. Jan leaves. So, so essentially you are asking, who will be the first one to leave, either uh, Mr. Jan or Mr. Sharma. Mr. Verma has already left, right. So, uh, but the exponential distribution is memory less. So, therefore, how long Mr. Jan, how long more will Mr. Jan take is uh, independent of um, uh, how long he has already been at the counter, right? because we have said that it is memory less and therefore, the service gets completed is not dependent on how long it will take for the service to be completed, it does not depend on how long he has already been serviced. And so, therefore, uh, it is equally likely that either uh, Mr. Sharma uh, will complete his service before Mr. Jan or Mr. Jan will complete. I am just assuming that Mr. Jan is still in the system, Mr. Verma is left, but uh, you can do it either way. right? So, therefore, a very simple uh, you know uh, use of uh, the memory less property of uh, uh, exponential distribution. And so, therefore, um, the probability of Mr. Sharma leaving uh, at last is half because it is equally likely whether uh, Mr. Jan completes his service first or Mr. Uh, Sharma completes his service, because of the memory less property. So, I thought this would just uh, add to the uh, Poisson process and the other systems that we have been talking of. Uh, birth and death process, that means when you have uh, people arriving at, uh, at a service station and uh, then they are being serviced. And so, then we want to talk about the uh, uh, you know number of people, average number of people in the system, then uh, uh, what, what is the average waiting time and so on. I would like to um, take this further, because once we have uh, been able to compute the uh, uh, you know arrivals 
uh, the, 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 we, 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 we have discussed the Poisson process. One of the arrival processes uh, uh, under these conditions that we have uh, laid down. And then, uh, now we want to um, uh, look at, you know for example, you have a service center and there you have uh, people arriving for service, then you have people providing the service and then that process is also random. So, now we want to combine these two and therefore, the whole the theory that you know, when you study such processes is known as queuing process. And then you want to for example, uh, you know, when you have a post office you want to know uh, because if the average number of people arriving in the post office is large, then you would uh, want to uh, one clerk may not be enough to serve everybody and the, you would and then the facility how big it should be and so on. So, they are very interesting questions, but of course, we will uh, study them at a very basic level. So, it will be uh, the queuing processes where you want to compute the average waiting time of a customer, you want to compute the average uh, service time of a, a customer, then you want to look at the uh, average number of people there at any time there are in the system and so on. So, such interesting uh, questions we would want to answer and therefore, we will model the situation where you have uh, uh, people arriving for service, services are being rendered and then people leave the system. So, the whole thing uh, we would want to study and this uh, we will try to do in the next couple of lectures. Okay.